Hello guys, it's Victor once again, another day, another scholarship. So today we have a full house. We have several funded opportunities, starting from funded bachelor's degrees to postdoc opportunities. So we're starting from bachelor's, going to master's, going to PhDs, and then going to postdoc. So we'll start first by the the Lester B. Pearson International Scholarship for bachelor's um, degree. Usually, I do not talk about bachelor's degree here. So this is like the first bachelor's degree um, scholarship I'll be talking about. And there have been lots of demand for a scholarship like this. So fully funded bachelor's degree in um, Canada. Then, of course, we'll be going to the master's degree as well, whether at uh, McGill or at UBC. Then we'll be talking about the highest PhD scholarship in Canada, the Vinya Scholarship, is the biggest generous scholarship worth 50,000 Canadian um, dollars per annum. So, and of course, we'll talk about some other opportunities like the postdoc um, scholarship as well, worth 70,000 um, Canadian dollars. So there are lots of opportunities here. And just stick with me while I talk you through these opportunities and by the way if you've not subscribed this is an excellent opportunity to, to do so so kindly click on the subscribe button leave me a like leave me a comment interact with the video a little bit more this will help the video reach more people and by the way google whispered to me not too long ago the majority of those who watch my videos are not subscribers so they come take the interesting bits of info and start working on the applications or well, they do not reciprocate this good gesture by liking the video or by subscribing. So kindly do so before we proceed. Thank you very much. So let's begin with the Lester B. Pearson International Student Scholarship. So this is a scholarship for those who just finished high school at the University of Toronto in Canada. And then um, those who just finished high school or those in their final year of high school or secondary school if that's what you call it in your country and um, this is um, open to international students from all over the world are you coming from paraguay are you coming from uganda are you coming from india are you coming from nigeria from belgium from norway from the uk regardless of where you're coming from this is a scholarship you would like to check out if you're a final year high school student or just graduated this year so and those are the eligibility criteria first an international student second a student um high school secondary school student graduating this year or in his or final year and you're planning to begin your studies in canada university of Toronto, to be precise um next year 2022 so there are several other courses in this university, several courses, whether in the practical sciences, in the social sciences, in the humanities, in, in the arts. So there's something for everybody if you check very closely. So it's a very long list, and I'm sure you'll find something for yourself here, or for your brother, or for your sister, or for that cousin of yours, or for that neighbor of yours who is looking for fully funded international scholarships for bachelor's um, degree. So how do we apply for this program? Um, first, you have to be nominated by your school. Yes, your school has to put you forward. So do not be wary about this process. It's actually quite simple. So your school is meant to register with the Pearson um, scholarship board and the registration you could always there's a link here to register so it's not rocket science there's a link here to register and by the way the registration for this year is yet to open the said application to participate now closed the closed year they're, they're referring to is closed for the last intake but this new intake the schools can start registering from fall in 2021 fall is usually from August, September, there about the last quarter of the year before winter. So your school can always register in the coming month. This video was shot in July. So it means from August, 
your school should start looking at this website to see when it opens for registration. So if your school is not registered yet, you could do so from August. So just tell your principal about it, tell your school administrator about this scholarship and um, fingers crossed they get you nominated. Of course, to be nominated by a school, you have to be a high achieving student, probably also participating in extracurricular activities, probably you're in the debating society, probably you help with community activities, probably you help in sports as well. You know, you have to be a rounded student to be competitive in this um, scholarship. So there are a number of deadlines here you have to be careful about. So your school nomination has to come in before the 30th of November. As you can see on the screen, 30th of November, your nomination should have come in. And of course, to up, you should have applied to the university, to, the, to this university by the um, 15th of um, December. So all the, all this, all the information you need is going to be here. Immediately you get nominated, I think they'll show you a number of processes, how to go through um, the rest of the application process. So there are several courses here. At your free time, you can always read through. It's a very large website, very informative as well. You could always read through the little bits of information here. And um, I think every year they accept up to up to 30 or over 30 students every year to this scholarship. So good luck to you as you attempt um, um, this scholarship. And um, we hope that you get it. We can't wait to celebrate you. So let's go to the master's opportunities. So first, I want to bring you some um, a little bit of a sad news from the MasterCard Foundation. So the MasterCard Foundation has been funded scholarships, fully funded master scholarships for a number of years at uh, McGill University in Canada. But unfortunately, um, their agreement or their funding agreement with um, McGill has come to an end. So for this year, you wouldn't be um, receiving any alert for a call for application for a MasterCard scholarship in McGill because it has come to an end. So this year's intake was actually the last intake. Those resuming by um, August, September, October this year, actually the last intake for MasterCard Foundation McGill. It was a, it was a good run, I would say, and a number of people have actually benefited from this. However, the MasterCard Foundation Scholarship at the um, University of British Columbia is still up, although they've not announced the call for application for this year. So this website hasn't been um, updated yet. This is the call for last year. And just keep an eye on this website. So immediately the call is open, you start applying. And of course, these are the eligible courses year in, year out. You have courses in um, forest management, environment, food technology, and data science, and um, land use, water, and things like that. So if your course is not included here, not to worry. Probably you cannot apply for this MasterCard scholarship, but there are several other funding opportunities in Canada. As a matter of fact, just last week, we had um, somebody from this channel who got into the University of Alberta, I think for animal science or something, fully funded or close to fully funded um, a master's scholarship. So there are several other funding opportunities in Canada. And I'll be doing a separate video on how to get um, funding in Canada, probably next week or in two weeks' time. So do not worry if your course is not included in this uh, MasterCard Foundation scholarship at UBC. So let's move on quickly. So now we're moving to the Vina Scholarship. The Vina Scholarship in Canada is one of the biggest, if not the biggest itself, um, fully funded PhD scholarship in Canada. So if you're targeting the PhD scholarship in Canada, you might want to look at this as well. Of course, it's aimed at highly qualified, highly driven, prospective PhD students. So how do you go about this? Well, before we go into that, you can always see the value of the scholarship here. 50,000 Canadian dollars per annum for three years. This is enough money to cover your tuition, to cover your sustenance and every other thing you need to get, and of course some pocket money as well. So I think this is more than enough for you to settle and study in Canada. So of course, how do you apply? So this is the important bit of information you need to know. The deadline, by the way, is um, 2nd of November, but this deadline is very tricky. I will tell you why. 
it is because of the nomination process. So to be nominated for this scholarship, you have to run, yes, mark my word, run or race to the participating Canadian universities. There are a number of them. Lord, I think it's a very long list. We'll be looking at the list shortly. So there are several participating Canadian universities. You need to run there and get one nomination from the Canadian university. So what do you do? You check the university, check their available courses, check if there's somebody in there, a number of people in there doing a research you're interested in, and you have to ask them to nominate you for the scholarship. The different participating universities have their own different websites on um, how they nominate candidates for the scholarship. So you might want to check the different universities. You might want to go to McGill and check how they nominate candidates or to University of Alberta or to um, UBC. Check because they might have their own ways of um, nomination and they also have their own different deadlines, often earlier than the 2nd of November. We'll be looking at that very shortly as well. So different universities have slightly different um, procedures and you have to know to be to be updated so you don't um, you don't miss out. So don't wait for November. Start contacting professors immediately after this video. Start searching for appropriate courses, such as searching for appropriate departments and supervisors and start working on this um, scholarship as soon as possible. So what are the documents you need to submit? So there are a number of um, documents here. Of course, this scholarship is open to everyone. Whether you're a Canadian citizen or not, whether you're a permanent resident or not, it is open to everybody, especially those who have already undertaken like a master's studies and now you want to do a PhD. And I think you can also do a master's plus PhD. So if there's a course that combines master's and PhD together, I think that course is also eligible for the Vina scholarship. So these are lots of instructions here you can read on your own. Of course, you're trying to apply for a PhD, so you must learn how to read and digest and extract important information. So what I just want to show you quickly are the required documents. So after getting a nomination from a university, there's a portal here where you apply. Of course, you send, um, do they call it, copies of your research proposal. This is one of the documents that gets people a little bit ruffled when we, when we speak to them about um, um, applications document for a PhD. So here they want a research proposal and I've done a video on this channel already on how to write a research proposal. In case you've not seen it, please take a look at it. And of course, references in your research proposal, you need a transcript, you need um, letters talking about your leadership capabilities. Probably you need professors or your previous employers who have worked with you, know your working style and who would um, vouch for you and write you something substantial and something competitive. This is a very competitive um, scholarship, I must say. People from different parts of the world are trying to take advantage of this um, scholarship. So you have to bring a solid, competitive application. So contact your universities. Try as much as possible to get all these documents um, ready as soon as possible. So there's another thing I have to show you. So there are lots of info here on this page already. So you could read and digest on your own on the procedure. But there's something I want to show you. And it's regarding the quotas for the participating universities. So here there's a long list of different universities in Canada. But I want you to pay attention to the quotas as well. Then also these headings as well. So these headings are often for those in social sciences, health sciences, and I think practical sciences. I think we saw this initially at the website. So it's open for those in health sciences, natural sciences, engineering, and social sciences. So that these organizations, you all these abbreviations are relevant um, bodies in Canada that are probably providing the funding, whether social sciences, um, engineering and natural sciences, then, then we also have health sciences as well. So these are the quotas they give universities. Some universities have very low quotas, just one. And some other universities have up to 153. You can see McGill, 153. So you might also want to play your cards right by, you know, checking for these universities with high quotas or contacting a number of universities and making sure you get at least 
one um, nomination. If you have multiple nominations, I think you have to decline the others and accept only one. Only one nomination is needed for your application, no multiple applications. So you could also look at this and see the quotas they're given different universities. So this is a very large one, 265 University of Toronto. So most of these big universities have bigger quotas as well. So you can see it for yourself, guys. Take advantage of it. So let's do still on this um, Viner scholarship. You could this is the website of UBC, University of British Columbia. And look at the deadline here. It's actually second of September. So two months before the actual deadline written on the official website. The official website says November 2nd. UBC saying September 2nd. So this is what I'm talking about. So visit the web page of the university or universities you're interested in and read through their own peculiar admissions requirements, their own deadlines. I think I cannot emphasize this enough. I cannot emphasize this enough. And for the documents you need to submit like the research proposal. I've done the research proposal already on this channel, so you can check it out. This is about the CV. I've talked about how to do a CV. Things about getting a recommendation. We've talked about it. How to write competitive essays and um, statement of purpose. We've also talked about it here. So, guys, we wish you good luck in all your <laughs> applications, and we can't wait to celebrate you. But that's not all, guys. That's not all. We still have funding opportunities for postdoc. Similar to the Viner scholarship we looked at. So this one is worth actually 70,000 Canadian dollars. And for two years, I think the one we saw for the PhD is actually for three years. Yes, this is actually for three years. While the postdoc is for two years. And the application procedure and requirements also quite similar. You have to go to departments and they need to nominate you for this. Of course, you have to be a a PhD holder to apply for a postdoc, have your PhD already in hand, find a department in Canada, the university in Canada, willing to accept you to further your research, to further your your um, experiment or whatever you want to do. And of course, it's open to those both in practical sciences, social sciences, health sciences. So take advantage of this, guys. Remember where we started? We started from the fully funded bachelor's scholarship. The Lester B. Person International Student Scholarship. Then we talked weekly about Majil and the end of their contract with MasterCard. We talked about looking out for um, UBC MasterCard. And I promise that I'll do another video about funding in Canada in um, two weeks' time. Then we talked about the Viner Scholarship in Canada and then the that you should be careful about the different deadlines or different requirements for the different universities than the postdoc opportunity. And then um, that's it, guys. I hope this was um, exciting enough for you to whet your appetite, to get you fired up, to get you interested, and to get you to start working on your application as um, soon as possible. So I wish you good luck. We cannot wait to celebrate you. See you at the top. Bye-bye for now.